subtitles. Like as uh, basically the security reason as these things get published, right? They take it and put this site. Gotcha. And, make this site. and you can donate to this to keep them doing this site because they basically so you don't have to you don't have to be me to get on the pulse to go like holy sh-. because a lot right. of things get hacked all the freaking time. Oh yeah, no, anything. like Experian, all that stuff. Welcome to the We Are Libertarians bonus hour. Uh, I am Chris Spangle. Uh, with me is Harry Price, and we are just doing Have I Been Pwned? So at the end of the last, and, and Harry's tech tip, uh, just the tip, he basically told us about this website that says, uh, Have I Been Pwned? P W N E D dot com. And basically it goes through and you put in your email, and then it shows you all the sites that that email is attached to. And how does it know what, what I've been attached to? Um, basically, you know, which your hack has been involved in. Yeah, but how does it know that Chris Spangle at gmail.com has been in those hacks? When they do the database, right? The uh-huh. database lets you, um, they'll basically, like, because that's what your username or that thing that they attach to your account. Okay. That's in that database hack from this from this specific hack. So they go and collect so they, the hacks. Right. Basically, the list okay. that get published for these security reasons, collect that list, and they then they use, basically, they just cut off the password portion and just insert it into a searchable database so you can find out how you've been involved in a hack. The other reason why they, a lot of security researchers collect these, the passwords, even not to do anything maliciously, they just kind of use them for password crackers mm. to crack different things or just to, you know, add different dictionaries. Like, you can be... It's one... If you're locked out of something, the easiest way to try to crack it is to look at someone's, like, past password history and like, okay, you used to make passwords like this. I'm guessing some variation around this different sure. thing here. Uh, or just to crack something at like you know, or just to you know to test like is my password secure? I don't know. Let me hit it. Wow, a hundred you know like what's your password? Guess what? A hundred thousand people also have this exact same password. Or just to put in your database file so people can't make these these passwords. Right. So it's like no, you can't use these passwords. So like uh, if you uh, if you go to putting like let's say there's when you go to create a username and someone goes like, well, I'm gonna make my password password because I don't care. Right, you can you can return back to the database. No, you can't use this password, mm. and they can use those lists also to make to strengthen that. Because, like I said in the other one of that um, from the Hacker News, is like you know there's over five hundred thousand people that and their password was password on like Netflix and all the different Goobies other sites. You know, yeah, and there's still old passwords hanging about. Like some people even go to reuse old passwords. Like if you, uh, you had a Tumblr, I even forgot I had a Tumblr account. <laughs> You, uh, well, I would imagine you have a Tumblr account. I can't believe I had a Tumblr. I don't remember having a Tumblr account. Man, I, I feel, almost feel ashamed. But, um, uh, that's probably back then when Tumblr wasn't as bad. But anyways, um, if you had, you forget about accounts like that and they get a hack, but you, for, most people were, will more likely remember that password they created and, and just use it for something. Just, right. Meh, I'll just use it for this. I just use it for this. Just like um, I made the mistake of just kept using the exact same password I used for anything for one time for like my Pandora account and just watched. And it was kind of cool to watch the different songs get in. It was like someone was into my Pandora account and just started adding songs. <laughs> uh, they like Mark Anthony. I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Uh, man, I just Googled Lara Witt, who is the subject of our next story. Uh, up next on the countdown. Uh, the countdown. S- so, ten things every intersectional feminist should ask on a first date. And so this was written... Now, you've probably seen this, but you probably didn't click on it. You're correct. And it's uh, from everydayfeminism.com. And this is not an Onion article. Like This is a, like, here are their categories. Fem 101, privilege, trans and GNC... Race, LBGTQIA, class, religion, sex, love, body, disability, violence, videos, and comics. Oh, okay. Right. I gotta show you how to do archive IS so you don't give cancer stuff like this cl- links. Okay. Uh it's okay. Uh here's here's a it's com- not okay. okay. Here's a comic. Uh here's a comic about how white terrorism has grown in the last decade. <laughs> oh Dagwood. <laughs> what if we thought of gender like ice cream? It makes sense. Here's why. And like it's basically they take memes and then they've written like hundred pages like look at this. It's just so oh yeah. Awful. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's cancer. The one we call it cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Cancer. And it's written by this uh this woman. I'm going to misgender her, I'm sure. Well, did you say woman? I said woman. I'm guessing her uh Assuming. 
I'm assuming uh, Lara Witt is an intersectional feminist writer, the managing editor of Wear Your Voice magazine, and a digital media consultant based in Philly. She writes about self-care, pop culture, and deconstructing systems of oppression. Her work has been featured in Teen Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Bust Magazine, Elle, and more. You can find her on Twitter, although I wouldn't recommend it. So I looked her up. I Google imaged her because I wanted to see if uh, she was hot. And she's smoking hot. Sexist. Um, she's very hot. I can't tell what her uh, race or religion is. It looks uh, ethnic. Your, your cis male uh, um, sexism and misogyny. I can feel it over here. Lara Witt hates white people, and her dad is white. Uh, this is from Front Page Mag, which is cancer on the right. Um, she tweeted, white people are evil. Whiteness is evil. She's from Teen Vogue. Um, she's Kenyan Indian, and that's just her mother. Her mother's from Kenya, her mother's Indian, um, and her dad's white. So, all right, cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we got. I find it despicable that some Jewish figures are decrying rockets being launched at them. Israel has mean, has the means to protect itself. Um, I have dedicated my life to dismantling white supremacy, but I don't weaponize my racial identity to do so. Uh, she's she's a real treat. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the type of girl I would be into, Harry. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. Shouldn't do that. I am currently dating a feminist, but it's hard to date in this day. <coughs> oh, would you stop commenting on the Trello? I'm going to turn off my volume now and be a professional. <laughs> um, so this is the type of girl that, like, you know my type, which is liberal, wear scarves, Nerd glasses, listens to Hermione. Oh yeah, but like way more feminist and liberal. Like reads Huff Poe. So so Hermione is she? I don't. I don't yeah. I, I'm not familiar enough with that uh, particular uh, person. Harry Potter. I know. I know. Um, so your leader's a muggle. So no, she's uh, she's very beautiful. Uh, <laughs> please tweet Lara and let her know that I said she's beautiful. Um, don't, please don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> now, what is an intersectional feminist? What the hell? What is fe- I? I know what feminist is, but like, why do we have to another, add another term? What does intersectional mean? First off, with your um, in your cis male normative mind, I doubt you can actually fathom what feminism is. You forgot white and straight. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, but intersectionality is basically is what. Most people who listen to this podcast understand as the liberal stack, the the, the social stack. So, okay. you know, like, you know, white people, the bottom. Okay, especially white male, the bottom. Then okay. You know, right. and then it's got, like, and it depends on, like, are you able body, um, your, uh, if you're a person of color, LGBT, you know, you know, um, gender fluid, ch- if you're trans. If basically that intersectionality of those different things and how they interact, through the feminist lens. Okay. All right. So I understand none of that, uh, but you're right. And the cr- the funny it, th- uh, Go ahead. I'm just going to say, it, it's got its point. It's like, wow, this could be a good idea. But when it's like, it's a crap base. If you're building up from crap, it's kind of hard to build anything nice off of it. All right. So like intersectional is like, so when she says every intersectional feminist should ask on a first date. So if you're an intersectional feminist, you're like a bisexual, biracial feminist you like you're, have to, you're like the, more than one of the different categories is no, that what they mean more of a, no, when they, no 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 they just believe in that mostly of that stack you don't have to be every you don't have to hit every rung of this stack to okay. be an intersexual feminist you, um, there's a lot of majority you know of them are white women are that part of this stack and a lot of them like to, to give the leeway to um, uh, women of color so if uh, so if you've talked uh, so basically if you had um um, a, a person of color, uh, mm-hmm. intersexual feminist, talking to a, a, a white woman who's an um, intersexual feminist, they will allow the person of color because of their uh, their society, uh, basically like everything that's ever happened to them, their background, all, the, all that stuff that I brought them to that point, they see it as valued more, so they need to have the, they need to be pushed to the front. Okay, the concept was given a name in 1989. That's correct. Um... Oops, sorry. I don't believe in this. Uh, I can debate uh, these people. The, the when 1989, when Kimberly Crenshaw, a woman, I'm guessing, 
a law professor at UCLA and Columbia leading a leader thinker on race theory, wrote a seminal paper on the topic. Um, white women do not want to jeopardize their power or their interests, so they now need to ask what they will do differently to help other women. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm trying. I mean, there's really like... it. I'm I'm a bit over how the mainstream narrative flattens the feminist movement to try to make it into the Sheryl Sandberg identity of feminism. Not to say she didn't have ideas that were helpful and on point, but there is a class conversation that gets lost. Uh, all right, so let's go. And it it let, usually is, and it's lost in a lot of different like feminists, like a lot of people who are like actually like need their help. And they just kind of get lost on their their ideas. All right, so feminism is practice. All right, let's go to Urban Dictionary. Intersectional feminism. Feminism as practiced by self-righteous people who will take any excuse to be rude, demeaning, demeaning, and even downright racist to other people in public. The intersectional feminist believes that just being pro-women's rights isn't enough and that you also don't bitch about racism and excluded exclusion of the disabled, LGBT people, religious discrimination as part of every conversation, then you're just part of the problem. The intersectional feminist will use their philosophy to enable poor pe- poor behavior and paint themselves the victim of every interaction they have with people who don't try to toe the party line. Uh, when called on their behavior and asked to try and get their point across without resorting to hostility, the if and will in- er- invariably cry racism against the oppressor. Essentially, these people represent the extreme end of a far, far left liberal po- philosophy where good ideas of equality and cooperation between all people are twisted into a constant rage at each other, at, at other well-meaning people who are all or not. All right, so these are like the all or, noth- all or nothing people. Okay, I, I, I get what you're saying. So it's like, so they're, they're um, it, 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 all right, I kind of get it. So, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah, it's the when most people say like when most people go feminism is cancer. I hate feminism. This is who they're really talking about. So like they Lara- ran into an intersectional feminist, right? So like Lara Witt's dad is white, mm-hmm. and Lara Witt's mom is Kenyan and something else. I forget what I said. Mm-hmm. She looks white. Yep. So white passable, white passing. Right. So so, so she but uh, up but she, privilege. Right. But she can okay, so she she's so she, she needs something to bring her stack down. So she she, she needs something, right? So intersectionality right. allows her to be be able to be a feminist and you know, attack white people and other people other people who are privileged just like she is. Okay. The only way to do it is through an intersectional feminist idea. Because to try to do that idea of like, well, what rights you do have that I don't have you know, when it comes down to it between two different white people, most people go like, no, nah, no, nah, y'all both white. I don't give a damn. Y'all both okay. white. All right. Okay. I get it. All right. So we, I, wanna, I wanted to, because this is one of those things that everybody's seen and everybody's making fun of, but I wanted to it's really funny. like, it is funny because it's totally serious. Like, it, all right. So let's look at the other articles on this website. So let's, no, this please, was, no, 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 no. I, wa- I just wanted people to get an idea of this website. How to survive the holidays in a cross-class relationship. Four reasons why we need to stop thinking of skinny shaming as reverse discrimination. Uh, Fifteen comments polyamorous people are getting tired of. Everyday self-love course. Um, five reasons why Asian respectability will never save us. Uh, so let's go to, do you have a social media addiction? 139 shares. Um, <laughs> I just want to kind of see how this fares. Go to Lara's other articles, you know, and it's not and uh, this site like uh, it's like you guys are just beating up the site the same way it was the Mary Sue, what the Mary Sue, six hundred and eleven shares on this. What is the Mary Sue? Mary Sue is also another intersectional feminist website okay. that also do different like what different things like this, but they break down like a lot of pop culture and stuff like that. Got it. So this has had almost forty seven thousand shares yeah. when, on a site that normally gets six hundred. Yeah. Um, which is a very like is very small for a blog. Like that's that's, the, you know, we are libertarians probably gets millions, millions of shares. We're probably fifty, I hope. Uh, <laughs> but the funny thing about this article is this ten, ten things every intersectional feminist should ask on a first date is the photo, is of a woman looking like sad on a first date and there's a guy the back of a guy's head Mm -hmm. and she's kind of you know she's got middle eastern features but she's white and she's super hot like 
they're using an attractive woman as as clickbait. Like they're yeah. they're using it to get your attention because this woman is so strikingly beautiful that you you can't help but like stop in your feed and look at this woman because she's so pretty. Mm-hmm. Like, and you wonder what she's really what's her what's yeah. her attention and why is she paying attention to this? Right. And so they're using her white identity and her beauty to get attention for this article, which is hilarious to me. Um, so she writes, as a queer femme of color, I keep close relationships with people who go beyond allyship, which what is allyship? Uh, being an ally with um, other people in the political stack. Like I said, it's the way to, because if you're not, if you're not gay or lesbian or tra- anyone in the G- BLT uh, stack, okay. you, know, you have to, you're you're an ally. All right. You so so as a white cis middle class male, mm-hmm. I uh, I would have to I would have to really go hard to I could never be an intersectional feminist male feminist, but I could be an ally. You don't just think it's male feminists are just male allies. Okay. All but, right. And and if most. And the hardcore male feminist, hardcore feminists don't really even see men, men as even allies. Okay, they most just see you as a predator in their midst. Okay, All Christy right. turfs. Uh, what? What's a turf? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just want people to like. I'm sorry. I just want equality, was- and for people to just be treated nicely, like. Like all the terminology is just so hard to keep up. Like it's it's just virtue signaling on virtue signaling. It's just. Ah, um, so who go beyond allyship? They're true accomplices in the fight against white supremacy, queerophobia, and misogyny. If you're not going to support marginalized folks, then we can't be friends, let alone date. The person, the personal is political, and this is like a really important thing to understand that the left is doing it more than the right, but the right is starting to do it, and that's why I think the Roy Moore situation is such a dangerous moment for the right because politics has become identity for so many people and for people on the left everything is has been like their politics is their identity and like if you're listening to us and you're like your identity is a libertarian and there's not like also dad mm-hmm. co-worker friend you know christian mm-hmm. jew muslim like there has to be other parts to your identity beyond just being a, a political ideology like I've just seen so many people over the last 15 years as I've worked in politics, like their identity is their politics. And so when you criticize their ideology and their politics, you are criticizing them and they just leap out. And so that's why the the SJWs just take this stuff so hard is because she's saying it. The personal is political. Right. Yeah, the personal is political. And this is the same thing these intersectional feminists have done to every different community they have gone jumped into. They've made it personal for so many years. Right. You know, and it's everywhere they go. And that's why when people go like, well, feminism is a cancer. Well, this is what they're talking about. I just remember Maya. Just like eating everything. When we were doing creating Maya, Maya had such a hard time because Maya was transitioning from male to female and mm-hmm. was going through a lot and like was really struggling with her transition and had a lot of questions and would go into trans groups trying to get answers. And they would just berate her because she was a libertarian. Right. You know, like, you still just have all your privilege and, like, really made it very hard for, I mean, she relied she relied on me. And, like, I'm, I'm like, bruh, I don't know. I can't help you. Like, it just, it is, it's, if you have one part that's out of alignment with the stack, right. apparently you're, yeah. you're fucked. Right out of the stack that you're, they try to kick you out. And especially, like, lucky she didn't run into, like, any more turfs. Right. Turfs are trans exclusion is ra- radical feminists. Beyond the lovely cushioning, happiness, and support that we receive from our pol- platonic relationships, which are, in all honesty, soul-feeding and essential. Feminists also date, but there are questions we have to ask before we get close to someone. The following list are applicable to all relationships, certainly not just cisgender, heterosexual ones. So the, you, you must ask this of all your relationships. And if you are if you are to be accepted into the cult of intersectional feminism, mm-hmm. you must accept all ten of these premises. And it's actually, like, a really scary thing. Like, we're all laughing about it on Facebook, but, like, I think it deserves a closer look because some of this stuff, it's, like, to be accepted. Because here's the thing about the left. Like, this is their end goal. This woman is their end goal. This is what a lot of leftists want. Not the left, leftists. Yeah, leftists. You know. 
Um, do you believe that black lives matter? Yes, wonderful. Let's start here. There are three categories that are non-negotiable for me. An understanding of race, class, and gender. Not everyone understands how they can be insidious, systematic, and intertwined, but anyone who doesn't take the time to learn how systemic racism works, who isn't going to care about how racism affects me or people who are darker skinned than I am, ugh. I don't want to have laborious discussions where I have to prove to someone that white privilege or non-black privilege exists. If they're willing to learn and listen and make the space to dis to decenter their whiteness, if they're white, that's a good place to start. So Harry, as a new feminist, I have to ask, <laughs> do you believe that black lives matter? No lives matter in the all void of everything <laughs> when it comes down to everything and in the endless time of span of everything our lives are really just specks of you know points of times even on this earth it means nothing in the grand scheme of thing and eventually a black hole will eradicate the earth and everything that we have ever created there's no chance the human race of getting past you know a black hole and our own sun collapsing everything that we've ever created so no nothing matters sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> Did you hear about that asteroid that's cigar shaped that's heading towards us? <laughs> yeah. By the way, like, yeah, giant meteor. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a giant meteor. It's a UFO. Like, yeah. there, there's a. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Um, all lives matter. But I understand. But but the thing is, like, this is such a multi layered sense, like, thing. Like, especially for a first date. I haven't dated in years, but this is kind of this is a rough question for a first date. Like I said, I am currently seeing someone who is a, who considers herself a feminist. She is every bit of one of these people. Mm -hmm. But, like, we've not gotten to this because she's not one of these people because she's like, eh, yeah, you just believe different than I do. And I go, yeah, you too. We'll just talk. Like, it's that those differences and those different beliefs. Yeah. I date a lot of liberals over my time, like, because it's just what white women are into. Uh, not that I'm against dating women of color. I've hit on Harry's sister several times. Mm -hmm. And then there's that other one I tried to get you today, but she's too alpha for you. She's way too much for me. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, she seems lovely, but she, she is. is too much woman for me. I don't mean that weight wise. I mean, like, I, I listen, I, she, she too much. Yeah. Yeah. She alpha. Yeah. I, and I told you that, like, hey, man, she alpha. I, was, I like, <laughs> you don't, you don't I like go, spunk. I don't like alpha. She's, she's alpha. Um, like, you don't show dominance on first date. You, you know. <laughs> but yeah, like, so, but, you know, birds of a feather, I guess, and this is just sort of what you run into. Like, uh, big, big, the other thing is they also get lumped into it, just kind yeah. of like how in uh, a white person at a like a prestigious like a like a college like an Ivy League college, they're gonna get they're gonna fall into young Republicans if they're from mm -hmm. that cloth. You know, they're gonna fall into young Republicans, or they're gonna fall into like the, the, like different like their groups. The feminist groups hits those women in college they get them in college they get them in high school and they they just kind of stick to the label because everyone's looking for their tribes so it's very right. easy to get young women into that tribe right it's and that's where a lot of that happens a lot of that comes from and a lot of that happens too yeah and that's why a lot of women sometimes identify as feminism or sometimes and then you and they always get freaked out when they meet a woman who does not identify as a feminist mm -hmm. and has, or does like have no idea what they're even talking about or think they're crazy? Yeah, because that's all they've never met because that's their tribe. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on gender? It's the next question you must ask your uh, first date. What are your thoughts on gender and sexual orientation? The gender binary is a tiny box, and I wish it didn't exist, but it does. I wouldn't want to be with anyone who is queer phobic. So, the gender binary. If if you believe that there are two genders, you are queer phobic. Uh, now, there's a difference between sex and gender, is there? Would you say that there's a difference between the two? So, like, the discussion revolves around sex is there's male, there's female, and then there's a small portion of the population mm -hmm. that is intersex. Correct. Very small. It's very very small. But then it's there's very rare. gender, which is how do you display your male and female qualities? to society and to say that there's only two genders and two, you know, two sexual proclivities, mm -hmm. you know, is foolish. And there's many different, there's hundreds on Facebook. Uh, that's muffins. Muffins is, muffins is into you, I think. Um, so like. Uh, Spangles touch my leg again. Oh, <laughs> what, what, you shut uh, your mouth or I'll ruin your career. <laughs> um, but when, uh, sex and gender, okay, they used to be like uh, those terms blur together and is blurred together for countless different times. And regardless of what a lot of these people have said, it's only in recent history that we've had the privilege to be able to 
separate those, dismantle and separate these two different words, right? And to be able to take them into different directions they have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the idea that using the word sex for like the male and female or different like genitalia and, and organs and stuff like that. When it comes to gender, it's like they want to use that term to beat people upside the head with it. When the people having different gender expression, I think it's an incredibly beautiful idea Mm -hmm. to go out there and play with this type of different idea. But when it comes down to it, right, it's just male, female, and then they slip into sex. It's it's very small. Yeah. Okay. And that's the two targets that you have to hit. And when it comes to, but gender is more of an expression of how you express yourself. And the reason why people are like, well, I can't discern how many genders because, you know, it's kind of like a T-shirt. You just kind of put, you know, whatever you're wearing that day Mm -hmm. or whatever you really feel like putting on. But the idea... And the, I have a problem with people taking that to extreme and making put it was when they put the force of law or government to it. Mm-hmm. To me, you know, if someone asks you not to to use these separate pronouns or not use pronouns at all with them, if they're your friend, you know them, they're very very polite. It's very polite, nice, and nice person. If they're going to be your friends, then you use the correct pronoun. Yeah, when Maya transitioned, like she said, I'm I'm a she now, yeah. and I for, for the entire length of our friendship, which came to an end when she violated my nap and destroyed my property. But, like, the entire run, it's like she wants to be referred to as she. And, of course, I slipped and said he, and, like, and she was forgiving about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it annoyed her, but it also was something that, like, it's not intentional. Right. You know, and it's not. And I think it's just, you, it comes down to, like, do you want to be a decent human being? And I see so many people on the right who are sitting there going, well, uh, there's only two genders, and fuck them, and, like... They forget it, their it, manners. It, it, it's exactly right. Like, what... You, you're you gonna sit there, and if I ask you if you're a Christian, you're going to say yes, and do you believe in the golden rule, and then you're going to have a discussion with me about gender and say, fuck them, I don't care what they think. And so you're you're not being consistent in how you apply your personal values. If a person comes to me and says they want to be treated like an octopus... And I love that person. I would have a discussion with them. I would try to understand them, just as I did with with Maya. I didn't always agree with everything, but I tried to love and understand and respect. And that's what you do if you're a decent person and a Christian. Uh, you know, to j- just sit there and say, like, I just don't care what you want to be called. If you want to be a potato, I'm still going to call you, you know, a man. I'm call you potato. <laughs> Right. You want to be potato, I'm oh, potato. Honestly. So so yeah, I just I just think there's an element of the discussion on the right because you want to be so reactionary and so like offensive to like out offensive their offensiveness. Right. That you end up forgetting what it means to be a decent person. Yeah. Well a lot of doesn't make you better than that. Yeah, a lot of times they well they're just so hit over the head by different things that they just feel like, you know, you know what, I'm gonna fight back on this and and gonna die on this hill, I'm gonna fight back with them. You know, me personally, um, I'm the internet generation. I got very upset the day that um, in the Discord server that Chris Spangle decided to dox Reinhold. Um, I prefer just to believe that I was just talking to a Rhino avatar and a Rhino person who somehow got a keyboard. I <sighs> would have preferred that until knowing it's an actual person. He's not a Rhino. I, and it hurt my feelings, just like I was talking to someone called Insert Their Name Here, and I thought it was just a cat in a Pinochet hat. I was like, okay, this is who I'm talking to. Right. I don't care. It's the internet. Uh, all right, so how do you d- work to dismantle sexism and misogyny in your life? I met cisgender heteronormative cishet, C-I-S-H-E-T. That's not it. So, so they created a word. Created another word. You know what? It's so... Cishet. Cishet. Yeah, cishet. Cishet. Um, shit is shit. Shit, Yes. <laughs> Uh, I've met cisgender heteronormative, which means me, uh, men who hate women. They say they love women, but that love is conditional on not having their toxic masculinity questioned or threatened in any way. They love as a monolith. They love what women have to offer, whether it is sex, food, love, care, emotional labor. They love us for what we can do for them, not because of who we are for ourselves. It is crucial for the cis hetero male to understand how to decenter their male privilege 
in order for them to understand multitudes of interpretations of femininity and womanhood. Mm -hmm. Beyond misogyny 101, does the person you are with understand rape culture, systemic sexism, and mis misogynoir? The fuck is misogynoir? <laughs> are they willing to learn if they don't? Misog like I'm... <laughs> I'm willing to learn, honestly, because I don't know what massage and noir. We're gonna look this up because this I'm learning a lot. Sounds like a like a movie genre that it would be awesome. Like it's like is is this Mad Men is its own genre now? Is that misogyny noir? Kinda because like I could go for like some more like a whole like genre of more Mad Men. Well, I'll just more got some more of that misogyny noir. Uh, <laughs> misogyny directed towards black women, where race and gender play both role and bias, uh, is coined by queer black feminist Moya uh -huh. Bailey who Such created the term, term to address misogyny directed towards black women in American visual and pop culture. Uh, four tired tropes that perfectly explain misogynoir. That's um, a great term, and they just ruined it for some crap. So misogynoir is the sassy black woman, the hypersexual Jezebel, the uh, angry black woman, the strong black woman. First off, black women are strong. Um, they are sassy. And they are sassy, and, but so, but uh, I, I don't know. I've met some non-sassy women, but I've met a lot of strong black women. Uh, yeah. But you know, like I said, like I was talking to my sister about a lot of this thing, especially this whole Me Too thing. I was just like, eh, maybe I just have a lot of badass women in my life. Yeah. You know, uh, I used because I used to hang around like my sister sorority, and I was like, maybe they're just all badass. Mis of course, they would like, yeah, our sorority to feel no <laughs> right. <laughs> Misogyny is more than the pay gap. Walk away from anyone that believes boys will be boys and women are supposed to be mothers because we're nothing but ambulatory incubators. I, I, this, I, is, I, this is reducing all men to... I, I mean, it's not even saying that. I don't even disagree with this, to be honest with you. Like, there are a... Well, I, I disagree with the notion that the majority of... I don't know. I mean, I, there are a lot of dudes... Well, here, hold on. There's a lot of dudes who are really selfish. But just like there are a lot of women who are super selfish, mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. where Humans. are the where are the terms to sit there and correct female privilege? Because mm -hmm. there are plenty of women who I've dated who, because I'm 280 pounds, think that because they're 130 pounds, I'm lucky to have them because of the differences in our visual appealing. Like it, it's your and, your weight is part of the um, the stack. You know that, right? Right. Well, exactly. So. So that dynamic plays out with women sometimes where they think, well, he's lucky to have me because I'm so hot. I'm so much better than I'm, – I'm five points above him on the scale. I'm a 10 and he's a 5. And so they think they can get away with more and treat you like shit. And then when you go correct your privilege, young lady, then they bounce because they're not going to put up with that because they know the next guy will put up with it and will be a doormat. So where are the terms to – because I've I know men who do that and I know women who do that. I know men I can give you examples on both ends of it's human behavior. Like maybe instead of like trying to make this all about male against female, why don't we talk about men have these certain behaviors in dating that are wrong and so do women. Like Well, Chris, um we're talking about women right now. Right. And that's a nice discussion. And we'd like to discuss those issues through the okay. feminist lens later. Okay. 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 Um, but no, when it comes down to that, um, those words don't exist. And the same th words they use for, but people in in power that mm -hmm. have privilege don't see their power okay. and, don't under, and don't know their privilege. Okay. So the same term that people talk about how people have white privilege, females don't also see their privilege because they also be, they don't have, they don't see their power. Gotcha. They don't, uh, and it's, you know, so that's like understanding. It's like the, like breaking this down, like the under, like understand rape culture. I understand rape culture. I understand the West is not a rape culture. You mm -hmm. cannot get away with rape here in the United States. That's how you get curb stumped. Right. There are countries that you can get away with rape, and um, India. India has an enormous problem with rape. And well, it's, that uh, that's kind of misreported. No, it's not. <laughs> like India has a tremendous. No, no, no. I'm not saying like the numbers up. But I'm saying like some of them are. It's weird. India is a weird place. It, India is a weird place, but there are a lot of villages where you can oh, pay yeah. off the guy. You can rape whoever yes. you want and then pay off the police. Correct. Yeah, that, Burma, um, or just yeah. some of these, just, you know, there's a lot of different places in Africa. There's a lot of different places that this stuff happens that this is a rape culture. Right. Okay? 
not here in the not here in the United States, not in England. That's you know not a rape culture. Systematic sexism. Um, show me what rights a man uh, that a woman does not have that a man has. Show me on a sheet of paper. Sure. Show me. Um, misogyny noir. Well, stop making Medea movies. Okay. <laughs> First off, uh, what are you? And um, when and next time you uh, and next time you see an angry black woman go off at the store, just go like, come on. Come on, just put it on. Stop showing on Facebook. Come on, Black Star Hip Hop. Yeah. How about World Star Hip Hop? You close it yeah. down. Yeah, stop that. Stop it. Stop. How about you close down you the whole? Stop it. Close down the whole Cardi B industry. Yeah. Okay. So also, misogyny in the pay gap. First off, if you can find me a woman making less than a man for the, the same experience doing the same amount of work, if you can find me that man and you can show me their pay, and they're actually the same, please show me that person, because I want to go with them to the lawyer to sue the crap out of the company. That Absolutely. Be, you know, and any other lawyer would be beating them off with a stick, because like, sh- if you found that, sh- please show that first lawyer, because they're ready to sue. Beating them off with a stick. Um, mm-hmm. that is I know it's a phallic shape. I'm sorry yes. about that. So it's part of the, and the whole boys will be boys thing that goes off the same phrase like the, like it's kind of like locker you know, room talk. No, boys will be boys and girls will be girls. It's it's a it's a part of a phrase of people going pranking and stuff like that. That's right. not meant for you know using for um, you know, like boys will be rough and tumble. Boys will be boys and be rough and tumble, and right. girls will be girls when they play with dolls and stuff like that. That's that's where that phrase come in. Try to blanket it to use it for because like boys will just beat on little girls or boys will rape people and be like, well, boys will be boys. No one freaking says that and you know come on get off it get off your freaking high horse and you actually analyze some of the crap that's going on any other time that rape has happened this is a freaking serious case especially when someone brings like evidence out mm-hmm. people people will destroy someone's life on the accusation of rape we do not live in a rape culture sorry i get very passionate holy sh- nikes what? roy Moore lost all right we'll deal with this later oh Thank um, you. Thank you. We yeah. don't have to talk about him no more. Unreal. We don't have to talk about him no more. No more more. All right, number four. What are your thoughts on sex work? You may scratch your head at this one, but much like racism and misogynoir, being pro-sex worker is a necessary pillar of dismantling the patri- patriarchy. You mean, First like, up, letting old white dudes fuck young, hot black women? Like, that's... First off. Legalize that. Let's that that'll help the patriarchy. I don't, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the patriarchy stopped the sex trade. I don't think that was the patriarchy. All right, let's hear if, this. If, oh, sorry, let's hear this out. I don't mean pro-sex worker in the sense where non-sex workers write op-eds and think pieces about how sex work is amazing and feminist. I mean the kind where we pass the mic to sex workers because they know their experience is better than anyone who ever hasn't engaged in sex work. I mean the kind of pro-hoaxism, our pr. What the hell? I'm learning so many words. <laughs> like, I just... Pro-ho... Well, it's pro-hook... Heracruz? It's H-E-A-U-T-H. Ho-thoughts. Is this uh, something James Neese came up with? It's, you might as well wrote this dang article. I can't even... More, polo- more colloquial... Uh, uh, can't even... Can't? Intersectional sex politics, black and brown women, trans rights, pro pro ho, derived from the more colloquial pro ho, black and brown womanist, women and femme, cis or trans who are pro sex, and or sex workers and support sex workers' rights. So it's it's a, like a label for this movement apparently. What is that prohesium or hesium? I mean the kind of pro hos where you understand the labor of sex workers of color, especially trans women of color. Who engage in sex work because their experience and knowledge is crucial to understanding oppressive structures of the world. Well, like a lot of but like, there's a lot of people in the trans community push a lot of other trans people towards sex work. Yeah, but sex work is work. Yeah, I I, I don't think libertarians generally have a problem with this. Like in a free society, right. if you want to sell your body, then you can sell your body. There are consequences to that. There are dangers to that, and mm-hmm. you take all the responsibilities for that. Correct. Yeah. And by having an open and transparent society where we do make available the avenues where sex workers can tell their their life story accurately, and th- then you get a more informed society making the decision if they want to go into sex work. Correct. And by doing that, a lot more people will not go into sex work. To be honest, I don't know about that. Trust me, I dated some hoes. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> See, like, but the thing is, it's like there's a lot of women that do like that do sex work that do lo- that love the job, that love the business, they love what they do, and they and they get paid very, and a lot of them get paid very handsomely. Some of them don't. Some of them have have a hard time, but a lot of the hard times they have is because of how the industry is looked upon. The other thing is, I doubt um, the patriarchy would stop the guys from. It, it makes no sense why the patriarchy would be against um, paying women for sex. That makes no sense. Um, that's where I. That's where the hang up on is at. I'm like, how would the, how does this not benefit men? Because as far as I know, as being a guy, I want sex. I also have money. If I put the two together, I can pay for sex. Who in this equation don't like this? Oh, right. that's right. The misses. <laughs> what? No, no. Yeah, that's the, where that's one dismantling. I'm moving on to the next one. I'm all tired right. of this one. Uh, yeah, no, we're all there. Uh, are you a supporter of the BDS movement? BDS stands for Boycott, Divest, Sanctions, an effort to end international support for Israel's oppression of Palestine. I grew up with Jewish, Israeli, non-Israeli friends, and Palestine friends. Before and even understanding the power and oppression worked together, we understood the trivial hatred that colonized and put in constant danger is the life of Palestinians. I eventually learned about apartheid. Um, listen, this from from a libertarian perspective, we shouldn't be supporting any na- any nation. Yeah, I don't support financially. Any, yeah, I don't, I don't want to support any nation financially. And the Palestinians need to uh, understand that the, the United States and the rest of the world is really holding Israel back because there's yeah. nothing really holding Israel back to just taking over the whole region. Exactly right. And to be honest. There's people like Pastor John Hagee and Pat Robertson and the evangelicals in this country that would make up whatever foreign aid. I mean, they send a tremendous amount of aid there already. So, Yeah, and they've got the firepower. They've got the ships. If they, if Israel really wanted it, they could, like, we're going to march to Egypt and stop there. <laughs> yeah. Anything in our path is ours. They are the best military in the region, in the world. Uh, yeah. What is your understanding of settler colonialism and indigenous rights? I didn't grow up in the United States. I was raised in Switzerland. So my understanding of how Europeans committed genocide against indigenous populations here in the U.S. was fairly limited. It required a good deal of my own research to really understand how settler colonialism works and how devastating the erasure and violence against Native Americans is and was. Your date thinks Native Americans are tropes or relics of the past? No thanks. A key part of intersectionality is having a complete understanding of how historical and current policies endangered the lives of millions of people, and simply because of white supremacy and the colonial entitlement to finite resources and land. From a libertarian perspective, there are parts of this that are true. We, we don't believe in neocolonialism. We don't believe that it's right for the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and the UN, uh, but and basically these bank cartels or Chinese governments or United States governments to go into a place like Kazakhstan or Niger or uh, Afghanistan and say, you have uranium, you have iron ore, you have all these resources, sell the rights to mining to ExxonMobil for your oil rights, Nigeria, and then give them an exclusive deal and we will give you cash in return. And then essentially you have loans that your country will never be able to pay back and then your nation is enslaved, and the only resource that you had to grow the economy is gone because you've sold the rights to uh, a foreign power, a foreign entity, a foreign company, a world, co- a world bank, and so your nation stagnates because they don't hire the Nigerians to work on the oil lines. ExxonMobil brings in Europeans and Americans to work on those mining fields in Nigeria. So... That's why there's so much war in Nigeria is because there's so much unemployment in a country of 250 million people, and you've got foreigners stealing their resources. So mm-hmm. that's not right, okay? Absolutely. But once you get to everything is about the past hurts, <laughs> like reparations. Uh, Harry, are you pro-reparations? Um, no. That's a dumb idea. Why? Uh you're what? you're a black man. You were you're you. Uh, I'm I'm guessing you were descended from slaves, right? No, I wasn't. Uh, what? No, I wasn't. Really? Yeah, really. I am telling the truth about all that. I don't think you think. Hope anyone doesn't think that's an act. I'm actually telling you the truth. Well, you're black, so you must have been a slave at some point, right? No, no, no. 
Um, no. I, no. I'm confused. At least uh, it's which I could trace back. No. Um, but the... Uh, and even if I was, I wouldn't. Yeah, like that's just that's something that happened. Like because if you trace about most anyone's like ancestry type, most people probably were slaves. Yeah, you know, there's probably more people who had slaves who were slaves in their background than there were our royalty. Right. You know, uh, most people are like, well, I, I bet our family with back in were R- Romanian princes. Yeah, right. Um, you're probably slaves. You know, yeah. Just like everyone else, for whatever, whatever barbarian horde went through your town and rounded everybody up to get scarce resources. Right. And yes, what the settlers did, like, as we can see that back there from this lens in 2017 of having all these plentiful resources, that was awful. But back then, shoot, you could die coming from a run bad winter. Heck mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to shoot somebody for, like, uh, for their land. Because the mo- more land I have, the more chances I have of survival. That's yep. just the way it was. You know, it. it I'm the one that people, um, I, um, this is, bit, it, it's a habit that I have. I love going to the grocery store every day. I love it. It's what I like doing. I like buying fresh ingredients and going to the store every day. Love it. I agree. I'm allowed that ability in 26, 2017. Right. It's supposed to be 2018. You know, you know, some settler, shoot, your store's your backyard, and it's mostly going to be dirt and whatever potato you can probably get out of the dang thing. You know, so yeah, it's gonna get. It, that's why that stuff happened. I'm not gonna erase that or forgive any of that, but I'm also not gonna sit here because I didn't know any people, and not gonna sit here and like, oh no, I'm sorry, da, 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 and emphasize like because eventually that stuff work, uh, you know, wears off. You know, like especially slavery was out of out of stuff in this country since 1863. The civil rights movement happened, you know, in the 60s and 70s. When does this trade? And and if and if the United States ever thought about praying about reparations. Probably should be back to the Japanese right. that are still alive that got pulled up and, and you know and like other than that I don't know no no move on <laughs> next <laughs> all right um let's see here um holy hell where did I put it uh sorry I, I'm do just... you think capitalism exploitative yes. anti capitalism especially the United States is imperative if you have an understanding of systematic racism the prison industrial complex the Thirteenth Amendment and exploitation. Capitalism, for one, teaches us that we are only valuable if we produce capital. That means that if you aren't contributing to the system with your labor, your life means almost nothing. If your date says they are anti-fascist and part of the resistance, but they're cool with exploiting labor from communities of color and they support the school-to-prison pipeline, then there is a good chance they'll only value you for your ability to nurture them with any without, without rep- uh, rep- <laughs> reparations. Re- reciprocation. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so this is bullshit. This is stupid. Uh, this is re- this is literally retarded. Um, it, it, there's, there's certain things that I just don't... Like, people on the far right and far left and even the far libertarian movement, like, people on the far end of any movement, sometimes they just believe stuff where they get so far that they just stop believing in facts and the things that are right in front of their eyes... Like you're, you get so far conservative that you stop believing that like the like you can literally like look at Greenland melting, <laughs> like we sh- should should we do something about that? Like let's get off of foreign oil, let's get off of American oil, let's start, you know what's what's the problem with lowering our carbon count? Like I'm not for destroying economic systems to do it, but let's have a discussion about it and start using the power of our our best minds to solve that. And lo and behold, you get a Tesla using capitalism to solve a problem like global warming with their batteries. You you get so far left that you stop looking at the uh, differences between the Soviet Union and the American system, the East and the West. Like when you look at communism in the 20th century, look at how many people died of starvation versus how many people, the middle class in America in the 20th century, look at where they started. My grandmother in 1930, nearly not even 100 years ago, when my grandmother, during the Great Depression in the 30s, which was made worse from uh, interference by the, by the government, instead of just leaving it alone and letting it all self-correct, FDR tried to help and tried to fix it. My grandmother would have potato soup for dinner every single day. Lunch, potato soup. You know what potato soup consisted of? Water and potatoes. That was her meal for like three years of her life. So now we're in the Great Recession, and I'm still going to McDonald's. I'm still having Chick-fil-A. Like, that's capitalism. Versus the Ukraine, 
you have people starving to death because once you get control of the food supply, for instance, under a communist system, then people start starving because it's really all about power. And it's not actually about economic fairness. Yeah. When you have an economic system like North Korea, let's look at North Korea. That is the logical conclusion. It's not a reducto absurdum. It is the actual logical conclusion of what this woman believes. In North Korea, the people who are at the top of the food chain live like kings, literal kings. Kim Jong-un has 13 houses. And everybody else is fucked. And, and you create a system where everybody is starving and everybody has no economic opportunity and everyone's miserable except for the people who are in power. That is the logical conclusion of your ideology. The logical conclusion of my ideology as a libertarian and believing in free markets and capitalism is that everyone prospers. And yes, there is inequality, but there's inequality in your system. Mm -hmm. And the inequality is that everyone is, is equal in misery as opposed to equal in prosperity. So, Let alone the bodies. Exactly the right. body count. We don't right. know how many people uh, that communism and socialism have killed. Yeah. We don't know. There's, there's just no numbers. Hundreds of millions. It, and that's a low estimate. Right. It's literally, I think it's like, like China killed 100 million people, I think. Since we know of this country, yeah. so large, they could probably uncover a mass grave just digging in another hole somewhere else. You know, just like they're in Russia and Ukraine, they can find another Stalin grave. Right. Oh, crap. Found another one. Yeah. Here's I mean, some bones. Yep. But Thanks, the other thing communism. is, uh, it's also like a, um, it's a misunderstanding of what capitalism is. It's Capitalism isn't like what you can do to value your labor. The system of capitalism is mostly the, the system to allocate resources that are scarce, scarce that have other uses. Right. You know, like if bread... Or sorry, or I could even go further. Like if flour, flour had one use, right? Just one use. Mm -hmm. You know, it just used to make bread. Well, that's not true. Flour can make cookies. They can, um, you can make biscuits. So, which which one do you make? Which one do you sell? How do you make these decisions? Right. You know, this is a very simple, simplified version of capitalism. But that's what it is, and that's what everyone does every day because everyone must make. The, everyone is greedy and wants to make the most money. So you'll make what makes sense, and you or you'll make what the what the what you can do with the scarce resources you have. If you if you're a central planner and you're trying to make these decisions, you have no idea what you're going to do. And so this is why um, the, those famines happen. You know, because if you believe, nope, no one, e everyone is not going to eat cookies this year, so don't do you know, don't make that much flour. Right. Well, <laughs> turns out everyone wants cookies. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's out of, you know, and we're out. Everyone's making bread too, and all this other stuff. So we're out of flour. Right. And then when you ask for different resources, you don't know what you need. You don't know what everyone's going to ask for because you're not in this capitalist. So you you're going to ask for everything you can freaking get your hands onto. Right. So you may not need. You may have access to a hundred things of flour. And you probably only need fifty. But since you don't really know, you're going to ask for all hundred. Right. All right, let's go on to number eight. Can any human be illegal? We live on a tiny planet with land and water and a galaxy surrounded by a universe with an inconceivable number of other galaxies and planets, even though the planet is dying. Yet here we dictate when, where we are and who is allowed to be where we are. It is mind-boggling that borders are even a thing. So to call people aliens or illegal immigrants is so humane, inhumane and despicable. White America stole this land, colonized this land, created so many borders, pushed out, killed, and enslaved people of color, and somehow they have the audacity to claim that this land is theirs and that black and brown immigrants are stealing jobs, lands, and homes. Miss me with that bullshit. Can I have your house? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, this this is just, let's, let's look at this logically. I was with her in the first paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No one is illegal. No aliens. No border. Whoa, what? <laughs> okay, so here's this is another problem with people who are on the far end of their ideology is that they they start to like float into the ether and libertarians are worse than, at this than <laughs> anybody else because you end up like I just Roger Paxton said I'm not a libertarian. Well, no, I'm a libertarian that tries to apply the libertarian philosophy to reality. I'm not a libertarian who sits there and tries to create my own new utopia. Like, I'm looking at what is. Like, I'm looking at what is the better choice for liberty in Alabama? Well, neither of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're, you're better off staying home if you were in Alabama, for instance. 
um, what what are people talking about? Like this instance, where where what are the libertarian thoughts on ten points of intersectional feminism? You know, where a, a, an anarchist gets to say, well, who cares? This wouldn't exist, and blah 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 blah. Let them, you know, the easy answer: let them go be themselves in uh, intersectional feminazi land. Like, okay, well, that's a great convenient answer, but maybe we should wrestle with the ideas a little bit. And the reality is that it's not 1842 in the Indian territories. It's not. It's not 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. It's not 1635 in St. Augustine or Jonestown. Like, it, it, it is 2017. It is the current year. So if we're going to sit there and say, it is the current year, how do people not believe this? Well, how can you not realize that you can't go back and fix what happened in 1492 in a completely different world, in a completely different culture, with completely different mindsets? You know, like part of what Roy Moore says, Roy Moore's supporters say, is that there was a time in this country where it was acceptable to marry 16-year-olds. Well, yeah. Now, it wasn't 1979, but it was a, it was 30 years previous, prior mm -hmm. to that. Yep. You know, and there is truth to that. Now, the truth is, is that 16-year-olds usually married 16-year-olds, not 35 marrying 16. That's the difference, Roy. Um, Which happened in the 1800s. But, absolutely. And so you have different values in different societies, and there's never any appreciation for the progress of society. Yes, Native Americans in this country have been treated horribly. We still continue to treat Native Americans in this country like absolute garbage mm -hmm. from a government perspective. Yep. And that, that's the disconnect. This woman can only think in terms of government and fixing society through government and using force. Which created the problem. Which created the problem. So what can we do? Are we to shut down all of the borders, all of the governments, all of the state and local and federal societies? We must get rid of all of those. We must have some sort of, what, some sort of convention to maybe create new systems, just get rid of them completely? Like, and I say that to my anarchist, anarcho-capitalist friends. What are we supposed to do? Are you going to somehow, in the next five years, convince everyone to shut down every layer of government? You're being irrational. You're not being logical. And so, you, you what is the what is the actionable item around your idea at this moment in time? We can plan a hundred years in the future. That's a, a perfectly valid discussion to have. How do we get to anarcho-capitalism within 100 years? That's if we want to go to anarcho-capitalism. Exactly. How do we return to a constitutional government in 100 years? Okay. Progressives 100 years ago sat down and said, how do we get to a progressive society within 100 years? They achieved it. Eugene Debs had a 100-year plan. And by in 1912, you look at his platform. It is Barack Obama's platform in 2012. So there, there's... It's like this impulsive right now knee-jerk reaction as opposed to how do we move there? How do we get there? And so you lose people when you want to sit there and say, you know, treatment 100 and 200 years ago towards Indians was despicable. I agree. Andrew Jackson was a shithead. And? So? <laughs> like... I, I was I wasn't Andrew Jackson. The federal government is different than it was. Uh, the federal government, you know, like <laughs> just elected the guy that prosecuted the Klan who killed four little girls in Bur in, in in Selma, like as opposed to the child molesters. Sometimes our government works the way that it's supposed to to keep nuts out. So I, I just don't understand the logical conclusion of this. I don't understand what actionable item she's actually looking for. Like I can I can agree with her that you know not every piece of land in this country either was the indians was the native americans it's like the swamp like white white settlers from germany moved into freelandville and planted the risley and spangle names from wh from whence i came on my dad's side and they didn't steal anyone's land they homesteaded they mm -hmm. came into a piece of property that nobody was using and created something out of it like they my my ancestors didn't steal that land nobody was on that land 
So what am I supposed to do about it? Like, uh-huh. I'm supposed to, like, give up my home? Like, we're just supposed to tear down all of our homes yeah. and just give it to the... One percent of the na- Native Americans that live in this uh, society now, like I'm supposed to find, like, like you want the truth? I'm half, I'm sixteenth, one sixteenth Cherokee and Choctaw, so like I want, I want that land, right? Like, give me the land. So, f- I don't know what the fuck her point is. What's your point? You read history. Good job. Mm-hmm. Like, congratulations. Do better tomorrow. <laughs> Let's talk about European history and talk right. about how the British crown also stole resources and, like, conquered over nations, and she's not really British. She's really German. Right. Um, we can, you know, it's, you know, and then... <laughs> Let's talk about the Mongolians. About Japan. Of, uh, 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 with her heritage, with her background, Yeah, she's she's got a lot of Mongolian in her. Yeah, yeah. Well, they took over the entire, uh, the entire, they took over her land. I mean... Well, it, yeah, that's a, yeah, you, She's descended from Genghis Khan, who was the greatest rapist and mass murderer in in the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you need to account for that, Lara. Like, who, yeah, it's trying to make you have like the sins of someone from like you have never known, never met, ne- and that time you probably would have not even made it out of childbirth. Right. You know, it's and it's ridiculous that and they're trying to put this white guilt on somebody or it's just guilt. Period. Um, but. Yeah, a lot of the land wasn't stolen. It was either homesteaded, it was also, or purchased. And, yeah, and that's how land was, was a lot, just like in Europe, just like in Africa, this other thing, land was conquered. Right. It sucked. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about it. You know, the things I can do about, like, you know, I hate being born under, like, certain laws. You know, I want to buy beer on Sunday, coal from a gas station. I cannot. Yeah. I care, you know, I can actually do something about that. I can try anyways. But yeah. So. All right. Number nine. Do you support Muslim Americans and non-Muslim people from Islamic countries? I can't think of any religion which has been so vilified and lied about more than Islam in a culture and a systemic way. You know, other than what you just did to my European ancestors. I am not a Muslim, so I will stay in my lane. But I cannot imagine for a second even claiming to be a feminist if I didn't stand in solidarity with my Muslim friends and family, especially now, especially after 9-11. Don't waste your time and energy on dating someone who thinks that Islam is inherently violent or misogynistic. Instead, read some Huda Sawari or Mona El Thawawi to educate yourself further on Muslim feminism. Yeah, go ahead. Read Huda Sawari and realize that this person should probably be in jail and everyone that put her up on uh, right. um, like platforms you know, is crazy wacko. Every, every Muslim nation, she would be up on hate crimes. Like, it, it's... Uh, not every month. Like, listen. Yeah. Th- yes. Th- every Muslim like, nation. She you, she- like, you go watch the Vice HBO Tonight piece. It's it's not the uh, news, but it's the actual series part. And they they talked about women in Afghanistan. And, like, go, like, so they have female legislators in Muslim countries. I mean, it's it's not as horribly dark as, you know, she is right. There is some propaganda against Muslims. Whoa, whoa. And, that is, and it's a lot of that but, is recent. But it isn't as dark across the Middle East as it sounds. It, and that fits into demonizing the enemy in the early 2000s to sell a war in, a, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And that has lingered. And within a certain population of people, there are definitely, uh, you know, the Trump people are anti-Muslim. But let's be honest. Let's have a real conversation. There was a bombing in New York City yesterday. Why did the guy do it? It's because he's affiliated with ISIS. He wants to blow up Americans because of ISIS. Does our foreign policy play into that? 100%. But he, he is being radicalized in, in, in uh, mosques mm-hmm. that, are, ideology. that are preaching a certain ideology that is dangerous. And so I have to ask Huda and Mona, do you agree with that? I have to ask Lara, do you support those mosques? You can't say that you're 100% across the board, pro-Muslim, pro-Islam, and and not have a conversation about the very real threat that it poses to humanity. Because there is a very large percentage of Muslims who want to chop the heads off of everyone who isn't Muslim. And so it's it's a very real issue. It's, it's something that we're facing as a society. Is it something that our foreign pos- policy largely caused to, to ramp up? Fuck yeah. yeah. Absolutely. 
and that's part of the conversation that we need to have without all the propagandizing. And what she's doing is she's just trying to she, she's just trying to sprinkle fairy dust over everything and say that things are good and you're just making it bad. Well, that's not the case. Like it's much more complicated than the way that you're making it out to be. Yeah, and um your uh, Muslim buddies in your Muslim countries, they they, they toss your LGBT friends right off the off exactly. right off a roof. Exactly. And um, they'll also toss your um, female friends with your uppity opinions. You know. Lara, let's see you go out on a date and have a conversation. Let's let's just see how you introduced yourself uh, as a queer femme of color. Oh, she, oh, she's going off the roof and she's getting stoned. Let's take you to Saudi Arabia, which is our closest Muslim ally. Let's sit you in the middle of Saudi Arabia and it's you say that. finally getting a, a movie theaters. Yeah. Women are driving. They're... See, which, which all these, well, that's all recent stuff, and that's only because, like, the new, soon-to-be uh, king up there is going to be a very young, progressive guy. So, yes, that is part of it. And so he knows he has a short amount of time to change things because he has a very young population of people who are our age, mm-hmm. who, are, who are 20s and 30s, mm-hmm. and they are... They are going to grow more and more restless, and they don't want to have an Arab Spring there. There's several different factors. So you have yep. a, a, a younger population who wants more modernization, and they see the income inequalities that are very serious. And uh, he knows that he has to start changing some things, or else they're going to be in very real trouble in 20 years. Because as America becomes the world's o- largest oil producer by opening Anwar in this new tax bill that will be signed, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, us moving off of foreign oil, you, you look at like what happened with Palestine and Jerusalem. It, it shows how completely impotent most foreign government, most of these governments in the Middle East actually are. They don't have the power to support Palestine and have five million people in an infantata protesting this decision like they did nothing really happened and it's because they have much bigger concerns which is the shrinking power of opec the shrinking revenues in oil the growth of iran and and its influence in the region uh and now you have this alignment of jordan and israel and egypt and saudi arabia and these shia countries fighting sunni company sunni countries everyone's concerned around about saudi arabia or uh, syria i mean and so Saudi Arabia has a very strong need to liberalize yep. and give women the power, give m- women more of a voice in society, or they're going to face very real social upheaval. Mm-hmm. America has infected Saudi Arabia with mm-hmm. liberty. Yeah. The ideas of liberty, the ideas of freedom, and a lot of these people, uh, and that they're wanting that there. Right. Um, if you listen to um, Gabriel Iglesias, the comedian, his, a lot of his special, he'll talk about him going to the Saudi Arabia. This is a comedian going to yeah. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. This is no, this no, this wrong. You can't do this. No, yeah. no. But they talk about how they will take them off to like a desert out in the wet. So these young people pay for them to come there and take them out away from all the, like the secret police and the secret priest. Sorry, the priest. Now they're not police. They're priest. Right. <laughs> and they have their comedians. They have their drinks. They do all their yep. dancing away from everything. Yeah. Those people grew up. Now they have power. Now there's yeah. like that, and it's. And it was weird to watch that stuff go from being underground and now to like, nope, no, we're done doing this underground. We yep. want to do this here now. We want to, you know, everyone's growing up. And it's nice to see that as it comes because if they, you're right, if they don't, then they, you know, they'll lose power. Right. Because right now the mili- the, the royal family runs everything. You know, you have to be a royal blood to fly, you know, airplanes and stuff like that. But they're like, they're like wait a minute. You know, I don't have to. There's not anything magical. That's something to agree that you haven't made. Why are you in power still? Hold yeah. on. Let's think about this for a second. All right. Final one. Does your allyship include disabled folks? As an able body of woman, again, I will stay in my lane, but intersectionality has to include a solid platform for disabled people and not just visible disabilities. If you have disabled friends or families, please make, an, make the effort to listen and learn about their lives and their experiences. Disabled folks are subject to shaming and violence because humans are awful and lack empathy. Be mindful of others who mock disabled people, the kind of cruelty that is inexcusable. Uh, on a date with someone who uses ableist slurs, walk away. So don't say retard on this Walk? Date. Walk away. Walk away? Oh, that's <laughs> super insensitive. I know. We um, have to roll away <clears throat> or limp away. Humans are awful and lack empathy. What? 
she, she, clearly she lacks empathy of white people. She is the one that is uh, that is a significant amount of projection, to be honest, because mm -hmm. somebody who thinks that humans are awful and lack empathy is somebody who and she is a rape survivor. She's been very clear about that. She is somebody who uh, has experienced the worst in humanity an experience that I have not experienced and something that I want to uh, understand and help change so that sh someone like her never has to experience that. But at the same time, you can't let that traumatic experience shade your commentary to think that every person is awful every person is you know and sh oh, well i'm not saying every person but in in mass i think people are actually very empathetic like i think we are at the most empathetic and most good uh point in human history yeah and it's just going to get better and it's just year. going to get better because of the freedom of information mm -hmm. freedom of speech truly is the foundation of all liberty that's why it's the first amendment freedom of assembly comes next freedom of religion allow people to be muslims and jews and hindi and whatever so then they don't have these 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 uh contests and then arm everybody so then you live in a safe society then allow people to have their own private castles a home a man's home is, is his castle like, if you just follow the the amendments, the Bill of Rights lady, you'd get it. But freedom of speech is the most important part because talking breeds empathy. And the, we're doing more talking now than ever before. Somebody like you with completely crackpot ideas can get on a website and say crazy dumb shit and make up new words. And you get 47,000 shares and let's say a... Let's say a half of those are making fun of you. Yeah. 24,000 people still read your ideas. And you weren't killed for it. <laughs> Toss off a roof. You may have... You had mean things said to you on Twitter, maybe. But you were... You were heard. And that's... Why liberty is great. And that's why you're dumb. Mm -hmm. So... Yep. That's why we talk with for guns. Right. You know, it... it yeah. The way it is, and I still have my stan stance of uh, I believe all the radical Muslims are here in the United States because they, they're Americans. <laughs> it's a radical idea. <laughs> all right, well, Harry, we destroyed the feminist in a single hour. I, I doubt that they're going to come back. Well, we've we've given our people a lot to think about. Yes, they're like death knights. They're going to come back. So, <laughs> all right, well, thank you for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians on this bonus episode we appreciate you we thank you and we will see you next week all right what i wanted uh, to do in reality